Hello and thank you for joining. Today's topic will be Excel Office 365 and specifically how to do an Excel payment function in order to calculate a financial payment for a loan. I've typed out a few titles here such as months of the loan months for the loan, interest rate and loan amount and the payment. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is go in and I'm going to modify cell B2 the formatting of it. This is where we're going to put the annual interest rate. So in order to make it a little bit more user friendly, I'm going to go ahead and change the number formatting here into a percentage. So I can do that either by clicking over here on number format, the little slanted arrow here at the bottom of the on the home tab under the number section. Or I can go in right click and say format cells. OK, I'm going to go ahead and click the number function here and they both bring up the same exact menu. And I'm going to go ahead and choose this as a percentage, and then I'm going to leave it at two decimal places. OK, then I'm going to go down to loan amount and payment, and I'm going to set these up as currency values. OK, so this time I'll go down and choose format cells down here. And I'll go ahead and I will uh, put in currency and I will leave it at the default of two decimal places. And it'll have the dollar symbol there in front of the values. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to fill in some of these values. So let's assume our loan is 42 months. And let's assume next that we get an interest rate of, say, 6.5%. OK. And then finally, how much money do we want to borrow for the loan? We'll assume we're buying a car and we're going to borrow $20,000. OK. And you see the formatting that I did added the percentage and the dollar symbol there. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find the payment value. And the payment value can be found with the payment function or PMT function in Excel. We can access that function one of two ways. We can manually enter it if we type equals PMT, open parentheses, and you'll see it will ask us for the values. OK, or we can go and we can access that from the menu system here. We can go to formulas, go under financial, scroll down to the PMT function, and it will pop up this nice and easy to read menu system to, to utilize. So the rate that we're going to use is going to be the interest rate. But because that's an annual interest rate and we're doing monthly payments, we're going to need to divide that by 12. Otherwise, you'd, your payments would be astronomical because it would be it would charge you 6.5% per month. OK, so the number of periods is going to reference represent in this case the number of months. So we're going to re reference cell B1. And finally, the present value is going to be the loan amount, which we have in cell B3. Future value will be zero, so we're going to leave that blank. And then this type is just going to default to zero here. Um, but you can modify this if you want to. You can put in, if you're going to make payments at the beginning of the period, you can put a one here. If you're going to make them at the end of the period, it'll be a zero. Otherwise, you can just leave it as, as the default, which will default to zero, the payment at the end of the period. So we're going to go ahead and say OK. And you're going to see it's going to have a payment of $533.69. You'll notice it's a negative number because it's a payment. So in order to make this a little more user friendly, when I highlight that cell, you'll see the formula up here, the function and formula up here in the in the in the in the toolbar here. So I'm going to go ahead right in front of the payment function. I'm going to go ahead and add a negative sign or a dash. And you'll see it'll put it in in the as a positive number. OK, then you can go here and change things like, oh, that payment's going to be a little too high for me. What if I get a 48 month loan? OK, I've reduced it down to four hundred seventy four dollars. Or what if I, you know, can change it to borrowing eighteen thousand dollars instead of twenty thousand? And then what if I can get a, you know, a lower interest rate at say four point two five percent? Right. So you can you can quickly change all these. And that's the nice thing about referencing the cell values. You can also go in and you don't need to reference the cell values. Like I can go in here and do equals negative PMT open parentheses and I can manually enter these values. So one thing is key here about the interest rate 
is it's not going to be 6.5 divided by 12. It's going to be, sorry, it's going to be 0 0.065 divided by 12. Okay. I put the percentage here because like 4.25 is, is, uh, Numerically, that's going to be 0 0.0425, not 4.25, okay? So it's what I did here. I did this. I'll change this to, to match 425 divided by 12. And again, that's divided by 12 for the monthly, per, uh, monthly interest rate. The number of periods will do 48. And the present value, we will do the $18,000, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and leave the future value and type off so the default to zeros there. And I'm going to go ahead and say return, and you'll see it's $408.44. Now, the nice thing about doing the formula like this, referencing the cells, is you can quickly go in and modify that and tweak it and do what-if analysis. Whereas over here, you have to go in and just you know put in new numbers every time. That's what I wanted to share with you today. If you're looking for more Excel content and other technical content, please subscribe. And thank you for joining. Have a great day.